Welcome back to our special coverage. Cracked, running out of water. California's Central Valley provides nearly half our nation's fruits and vegetables. So when the fields dry up, so do the jobs. Nearly half the people living in Mendota, California are unemployed, and it could get worse. This is ground zero for a devastating drought. It's called the Cantaloupe Center of the World. But as the water continues to disappear, so too do the melons. You know, we got the richest agricultural area in, in, in California, and you see these brown spots because of lack of water. It's sad. And as the cantaloupes vanish, a large percentage of jobs in this town of about 11,000 do as well. We're roughly about 40% unemployment. It's higher than normal. Right now, because of the water situation and the farmers are not planning, it's an uh, indication that uh, it's going to be uh, up close to maybe 55% by, by the time uh, the, you know, the situation is over. And with more people out of work, that means less money to spend, which creates a ripple effect to business owners like Rolando Castro, who owns an auto repair shop. I'm holding up because I get out of town work. That's how I've been holding up. You know, unfortunately I had to advertise out of town because it, this town, it, it's looking like a ghost town. It's so bad that downtown streets are periodically turned into food lines. Ugly to see the people standing in line, uh, you know, because they're out of a job. And the main thing is uh, they're you know, being provided. And there's a lot of agencies and realize that uh, people have to eat. It's really something that out of like a third world country right here in Central California, where people have to stand in line to get food for, to put on the table. In February, President Obama visited the drought-plagued area and pledged financial assistance. But without water, everyone will pay the long-term price. Funny thing is that back east, everybody's drowning. Colorado's got all the snow, and California's burning up. Wait until they start seeing that the peaches and the nectarines and tomatoes and lettuce and corn that is being produced here in the state of California. When they start paying the high prices, then they're gonna say, well, what happened? Political water wars that are occurring all over the state of California. You got the endangered species, which uh, a lot of folks think that it's more important to keep the water up north instead of sending it down south and, and putting uh, people uh, uh, back to work. This area is so rich in ag that when you cut off that water to the farmers, it affects a lot of people. So it's not just Mendota, but it's gonna be a disaster for a lot of cities here in the Central Valley. It's not just the farm workers suffering from this drought. With less money coming in, that means less money going out to businesses, restaurants, and even schools. Chris Warren joins me once again. Chris, any job loss is obviously an awful thing, but there is something bigger going on here in California. Parts of the state are actually sinking, aren't they? And it could be permanent. Here's what's going on. First, without the snow melt, without the water running into the San Joaquin River, it's running dry. OK, so the farmers need to get water somewhere and there's an aquifer underground. Dig a well. Sure, you can dig a well and get your water that way. Here's the problem. Once you do that, you have subsidence. So the land, it sinks in the past oh, 30 boy. years, already about 30 feet. And when that sinks, you can't get it back. You can can't you? get it back. You can't pump water in to push it up. It doesn't happen that way. So two big problems with this. First, when the rains finally do come back, you could flood your fields. The fields are now flooded and your crops are ruined. The other thing is when you get that water table below sea level, below the Pacific Ocean, what happens then? Here comes the salt water. It comes into the aquifer, and now when the Unusable. San Joaquin River runs dry, you can't go to the well because it's salt water. water. It's unusable now, and this is the area, huge area, size of Rhode Island that's so sinking. So how much time are we talking about before this seawater starts coming into these aquifers? The best guess right now from scientists, about two years. Of continued drought. If you can believe that, in two years, this, it, this could happen. Serious situation. Very serious situation. Thanks, Chris. Great stuff. All right, guys, California and Texas both need serious help from Mother Nature, and El Nino could bring some relief later this year. But when people expect to get rain, and they don't, it's a sinking feeling. It's really kind of disheartening because you keep hear, hearing everyone talking about how we're supposed to get two or three days of good, of good rain and 60, 70 percent chance of rain, and then you just watch it kind of split. Weather will build up, come to Wichita, and then all of a sudden it just divides and separates and goes around. We don't get the water, the grass, we don't get to play in the yards. If we don't get enough rain, I'm afraid it's a goner. So Wichita's going to end up being a ghost town. 
everybody's gonna leave because there's no water. I think it'll rain eventually. I don't really think it's a curse. I don't think God's mad at us like a lot of people are saying, but uh, uh, I mean, it's just the way it is. We're kind of tired of it. You know, we're wanting to get rain, water, but there's nothing, there's no fun here no more. So we are thinking about moving. It'll come back. It'll come back. I don't know when, but it, it will. It will. Sooner or later. The drought isn't something that will go away anytime soon. Dozens of towns could run out of water as early as midsummer. Some are already trucking in water just to stay alive. All we can do now is pray for rain. I'm meteorologist Jim Cantori.